After years of lying, Democrats finally admit that Biden has a big problem. What is up, uh, people of the internet? It is me, Real American, back in with a new video and today. We have to discuss the Biden campaign because, let's face it, this campaign keeps getting bad news. And we're not talking about, oh, one bad article a day. No. It seems like every hour we get a brand new report from Axios, NBC News, Politico, etc., where they're admitting, oh yeah, Biden cannot function for more than three hours a day. Um, you know, he has some problems here and there, all of that. But this one might be the most damning of them all because you have a Democrat senator. Yes, not some random staffer, not some random person, no. Someone that's currently in the Senate, that's a Democrat, admitted to NBC News, yeah, I've known about this for two and a half years. Yeah, so they admitted, finally, we've known about this. Which, in my opinion, this is a scandal. Because they've known that the president has had problems for years. And instead of telling the American people that, hey, the president has some problems, they decided to completely ignore it, they lied about it, that they kept saying... President Biden has a very high IQ, he's functioning, he's very sharp, all of that. They've been saying that for years. But the past week or so, the floodgates have opened completely. Now you have Democrats admitting, yeah, we've known about this, he, he can barely function, you know, all of that. It is getting really bad. But the reason I think this is noteworthy is, this is not a staffer, this isn't someone random. This is someone in the Senate. That's according to NBC News. This could be wrong, right? This could be complete BS. But I really believe that there is legitimacy to this article for one simple fact. We've had hundreds, if not thousands, of articles published the past week where we know for a fact a bunch of House Democrats in particular are outright saying, we're done with them. We are done with Biden. We want him to drop out. Hell, you had Jared Golden of Maine. And I know Maine second's very competitive for him. It's like a Trump plus eight district. But he admitted, I may not support Biden this year. All right. I may not vote for him. I think Trump's going to win all of that. You, you may argue, well, that's campaign speak. We've heard the same thing from Prez in Washington third, another competitive district. And you notice how a bunch of Democrats in swing districts, they're not saying a damn thing about this debate. Not one thing. Hmm, makes you really wonder. The fact is, Democrats are in a complete panic, and they have no clue what to do. It's an open rebellion. A bunch of Democrats, especially in the House, they want him gone. Because he is such a drag to the ballot that if they run with him, there's a good chance that a bunch of Democrats in competitive districts get absolutely killed. And now it makes more sense why a bunch of these sources running to the media and admitting that he has a bunch of problems, he can barely function for five hours a day, all of that, they're mostly congressmen. Like right here, according to a congressman, he looked frail and weak. And they've known about this for two and a half years. One senator said, yeah, these are people that are actually running for re-election. You notice that the people that are defending Biden... They're the ones that either they have nothing to lose, you know, like they're not going to lose anything because they, they're either not in office or they're not up for re-election. Notice that? Notice how Gretchen Whitmer, Newsom, etc. They're backing Biden vehemently. And you might be saying, well, that might be a play to gain the trust of Biden people. Who knows? Fine, whatever. But this open rebellion, it's happening within Congress because these people are actually up for re-election, and they don't want Biden. And frankly, this is a lose-lose situation for Democrats because they have to pick one side. This is a two-sided civil war. You have the pro-Biden people, which is the upper White House people, the people like Jill Biden, Hunter Biden, the inner circle, the higher-ups, you know, those people, versus effectively half of Congress. That's what it sounds like. Half of Congress on the Democrat side, they want Biden out. They want him gone because they realize we're in deep trouble. If he stays on the ballot, I'm probably losing. And I, I don't know what Democrats do here. Because if you choose, well, let's say they stick with Biden. He, he's going to lose. There, there's no other way to put it. He's done. 
I just don't see how it's possible for Biden to somehow scrape by a victory. So you're going to lose. And frankly, it's going to kill Democrats up and down the ballot. And like I said, that's why they're running to NBC News. They're running to Axios. They're trying to force Biden out through the media. They're telling them all this bad shit that, frankly, they would have never said if he had any chance at winning. If they really believe that he's done, th that's why they're going to the media. That's why they're saying, yeah, he's done. He has a bunch of problems. We've known about this for a while. Hell, according to NBC News, it's about a group of 40 Democratic lawmakers that have been working together on this. Like, hey... We got to get rid of this guy. He's going to screw us up and down the ballot. We're going to get killed because of him. But let's just assume that somehow, some way, they force Biden out. Like, okay, the group of 40 Democrat lawmakers, they're successful. They keep running to the media, and eventually they get Biden out somehow, whether he resigns, retires, whatever. All right, let's say, okay, we got rid of him. You could argue there are more problems with that than just running with Biden. And I know that sounds crazy, but there are many problems. For one, legally speaking, they're going to have some big issues in Wisconsin, Georgia, etc. because of ballot access laws. You have to run with Biden because legally speaking, he's the only Democrat that's qualified to be on the ballot in Wisconsin. So you are effectively giving up states like Wisconsin, Georgia, etc. If this was Wyoming, they wouldn't care. But these are swing states, and they cannot afford to lose states like that. So that's the number one problem. But secondly, you're going to piss off over two-thirds of your base because two-thirds of Democrats to this day still want Biden, which I know that sounds crazy that two-thirds of the party still want the guy, but this is the Democrat party we're talking about. This isn't a normal party. Either way, two-thirds of them still want him. And on top of that, Biden received millions of votes in the primary, which I know there were some pathetic results there, but even with that, you know, like, okay, he had some pathetic results. He got like 80% in Minnesota, 70% in Michigan or whatever. It was bad in many states, but you still had a lot of people go out and vote for him. Can you imagine telling these people, hey, uh, yeah, we know you voted for Biden, you know, we're the party of democracy and all of that. But we decided, you know, your vote doesn't matter. We're going to pick someone else. Someone that didn't run the first place. Effectively to screw you to the voters. You know, like, eh, who cares? And that's going to piss off a lot of people. You know, it may not piss off every single Democrat, but primary voters, they may look at that and say to themselves, what was the point? Why did I vote for Biden? Why did I volunteer for him? When the Democrat Party decided, you know what? Eh, screw it. We're going to decide ourselves who we want, which is just undemocratic. But either way, you get the point that that would piss off a bunch of Democrats. And on top of all of that, you have to build a brand new campaign from the ground up. I mean, seriously, you cannot just copy and paste the Biden campaign to, say, Gavin Newsom or whoever. Legally, you can't. The only one you can technically do with that is Kamala Harris. And that's arguably the biggest problem. Like, let's say you find a way to somehow get through all the legal BS, somehow unite the entire party behind one person, which I frankly don't think is possible, and somehow build up a brand new campaign. Who the hell are you running? That's the number one question, and I don't think Democrats are thinking this one through. Like, Biden is a very weak candidate. Let's be clear. He is extremely weak. He's going to get crushed. But you could argue, of all the other options, which, by the way, ABC News, oddly enough, just a day before this article was posted, they released this. Oh, who could replace Biden? So let's look at some of the people that could maybe replace him. Arguably, the, the, the one that makes the most sense is Kamala Harris. You know, if you want to keep your fundraise and you want to keep your ballot access, all of that, legally speaking and campaign-wise, Kamala Harris makes the most sense. But electorally, she is going to do horrible. I don't care what that poll from, I think, CNN said or whatever. She is going to get crushed. The only reason she's doing slightly better than Biden, which, by the way, according to CNN, she's still losing by two. All that's happening is a bunch of Democrats are thinking, well, you know, Biden is so bad that Kamala Harris is way better. 
when just two months ago, everyone agreed she's worse than Biden. You know, I really think it's recency bias where people are thinking, well, at least she's there, supposedly mentally. You know, she's there, which people are going to realize quickly she's not. She's dumb. She's a very dumb person that should not be the VP, but whatever. So if you get Kamala Harris, she is the one person you could argue would do even worse than Biden. So do you really want that? For whatever reason, Democrats think, no, that's our best option. But they might be looking at the, all the legal stuff we just talked about and realized, oh, crap, this is our best option. Which, she, at that point, she's a sacrificial lamb. She's going to get crushed. But at that point, it's like, well, why give her to Biden? You're going to do better with him anyway. Just keep on the ballot and see what happens. Now, you can also look at someone like Gretchen Whitmer, but I think it's too late for her. We are in June. If she was somehow the nominee, A, she would have to go through all the legal stuff, which we talked about. B, she doesn't have the name recognition like even Gavin Newsom has. I mean, seriously, outside of the people on Twitter, who knows about Gretchen Whitmer? No one. No one that's not online, you know, 24-7, is going to know who she is. So she's going to have four months to convince tens of millions of people to vote for her, to, to learn about her. That's just not possible. And C, she has to build a brand new campaign from scratch, uh, scratch. Excuse me. Just like people, like anyone else that's not Kamala Harris, they need a brand new campaign. That's the biggest problem they're going to run into. And I think they're starting to realize, oh crap, we don't have time to pick someone like Whitmer. Hell, even Gavin Newsom. Now, to be fair to Newsom, he has higher name recognition. He has money behind him. So maybe he could do better, but the problem is people know Gavin Newsom for being a shitty governor. So you're going to pick him? Um, I don't think it's a good idea. Andy Bashir, no one knows about. I don't get why people consider him a front runner. First of all, he would piss off the progressives for not being progressive enough. And secondly, outside of Kentucky, no one knows who he is. Pritzker's a meme. I don't get why people think he's going to run. Buttigieg, why? If they go with someone like Buttigieg, they might as well just pick Kamala Harris. He has all the same problems as, say, Gavin Newsom or Gretchen Whitmer will have. But on top of that, I mean, Democrats are not going to skip over a black woman. That, that's just a reality. They're not going to pick a white dude. I know Pete Buttigieg is gay, but still, this is the Democrat Party. They don't pick people based off of policy, based off of elect electability, any of that. It's based off of race, based off of sex, all of that. They don't care about, you know, oh, how electable is Pete Buttigieg? They don't care. Now, I'm not saying Buttigieg is electable, but you get the point that they're never going to pick him because he's a white dude over Kamala Harris. And on top of that, why would you pick someone that is a transportation secretary? Why? Everyone's going to look at that and say to themselves, oh my God, this guy runs the roads. He's the one that's supposed to fix the bridges. You know, he's in charge of the airliners, all of that. And it's, it's a mess right now. We're really going to trust him when he can't even get the airports to run properly. No, no one's going to buy into that. And of course they bring up Michelle Obama. She's not going to run. She has no interest in running for politics at all. All right, everyone's been saying this for years. Anyone that's been involved in politics, that's what they say. She doesn't want to be involved. Hell, she never wanted o Obama to run the first place. That's a fact. But she decided, fine, whatever. Outside of that, who do they got? Of all the options here, Obama would be the best pick, but she's not going to run. And even then, it's like, does that mean he she's going to magically win? I don't think so. She's still got the problems of Gretchen Whitmer. She's not going to be on the ballot in states like Wisconsin. It is a complete disaster for Democrats, no matter what they do. And this is a civil war that's slowly brewing. And if they don't make a decision soon, they're, they're, it's going to spiral out of control. It already has, kind of, but it could get a lot worse. Anyways, folks, thank you so much for watching. If you guys did enjoy this video, smash the like button down below, subscribe, share with your friends, hit that little bell, follow the social media accounts in the description down below, and of course, join the channel today. Godspeed to all of you.